I asked myself many questions if I wasn't to know the Lord. Who will I be today? Amen. But stay with God, it's so helpful. Um, we are going to talk about uh, trusting God with all your heart. It's not easy. But we are supposed to trust God, it doesn't matter what. Um, what is trusting God? It's an essential element that we are supposed to do as Christians. Which is true and saving faith that looks at God. It doesn't matter what. Whether you have food or you don't have food, you look up to God to say, God, I'm here. It doesn't matter what happens. And because in God we find peace, strength, contentment, and much more in Him. Believe me, there's no peace in outside there. Yesterday, um, Mama Nene, Monday Sir visited us and, and uh, they said, Mama is busy outside there. I said, is, is there a party? They said, no, Mama, it's spring day. You know, to me, I, uh, sometimes I lose touch with reality. I said, is there a party you know, in South Africa? What's happening? They said, no, Mama, it's spring day. So because I find peace in the Lord, I don't, I don't care what's happening out there. Because with God, I have everything. Amen. So believe me, a lot was happening yesterday. But you go to them to say what happened yesterday. They won't show a thing. But with God, you are satisfied. Amen. All that he has done, all is doing, all will do both now and forever in his son's Jesus Christ. You know, God, whatever he has done previously, what he's doing now, what he's going to do in future, is good. Yeah. Believe me. And, and sometimes we, we tend to, to think uh, Christian life means we're not going to have challenges. No, you have challenges. All of us, we have challenges. I also have challenges. There are times I say, oh God, what's happening to my life? But God says, I'm there for you. Yeah. So, and uh, really, you know, life, life, life will humble you. Yeah. But God is there. Believe me, God is there. Yeah. And trusting God is those truths we think we understand. You know, sometimes we think you understand what trusting God means. Until we are called upon to do it. Then we discover that there's more to it than we have to realize. You know, you might think you trust God, but until you are in the situation, then you realize it's not easy. Amen. So, so life has more challenges. So it's an aspect of saving faith. You know, faith has three elements in them, and trust is one of those. So when you say you have faith, it means you, have, you must have knowledge about what, what is faith. Number two, you must have ascent. You know, when we, we deal with kids in research below the age of 18, they cannot consent, but they feel an assent for. So it means you approve, you give approval, and then you trust. So the three things work in faith. So for you to work in faith, you must have knowledge, you must have what? Approval, and, and trust. Mama Nene, thank you so much for talking about what you are in here, Mona. You made my day. Amen. I was praying for this day for you to find yourself in the church. Amen. And and sometimes trusting God in this era it might seem to be, you know, to be something else. Mm. I, I think when I say to my kids, when my car is not okay, I say, you know, this car will move tomorrow. Yeah. They say, you are crazy. This engine requires a mechanic. Just call the mechanic to come and fix it. I said, no, mm. it will move tomorrow. Amen. You know, they say, mama, you are crazy. I will be very careful. Your books are making you crazy. <laughs> And, and we have deadlines, they say we are going to give you a week, I said thank you so much. Amen. And we're praying, and then believe me, before the end of the week, my car will be fired. Amen. Because I trust upon to, uh, upon to Lord. Amen. So people might think you are crazy when you say God will do that, and you are not crazy. Amen. Because you trust what on God. Amen. So you must also want not do that at all the times. So, so never, nevertheless, trusting God, you must, no matter what, we must, the Bible says you must trust God. Hmm. It doesn't matter whether you have a job, you don't have a job, you have food or not. 
believe me, you might be, your table might be empty, right? but when you trust God, you cry upon unto him. Someone might knock in and say, hey, how are you? And then they give you something. What is that? Because God is in charge of your life. Amen. God is in control of your life. So you must trust God at all the times. Amen. So we are commanded to trust. It's not God, you know. I, I don't know how to try and indicate. It's not God, you know. It's an obligation. We are obliged to, to trust God as Christians. So let us read Psalm 4, uh, verse 5. And Proverbs 2, 3, uh, verses, 3 to, verses 5 to 6. Psalm 4, verse 5. Or maybe I read what is there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We can read what is there. Yeah. So David tells the reader to offer the rights, sacrifices, and put your trust in the Lord. Yeah. We are sort of you know, commanded. We don't have a choice. We are commanded to trust God at all the times. Yeah. And, and when you go into Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, it encourages us to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Amen. You know, sometimes um, my grandmother used to know to tell the community members to say, you know, my grandmother has studied, my daughter has studied a lot. My granddaughter has been to all, she has finished all the schools in South Africa. Isn't that you know, sometimes I went overseas. He said, my granddaughter has finished all the schools in South Africa. Now she went over, so she finished all of them, you know? <laughs> and, and people wouldn't understand, you say, but what do you mean by that? She said, I said, you know, the reason they they're taking her over, since so all the schools in South Africa, she has finished all of them. <laughs> you know? So, 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 that's life. So, the Bible, God says what? We are not supposed to lean unto our own understanding. Amen. But we lean upon what? On God. Because the minute you lean on your own understanding, then you're going to misinterpret the word of God. You're going to say something that is what? Irrelevant. So if you lean up onto the word of God, then you talk according to what, what the Bible says, what God says about your life. So it's very important for us to, to try and look up unto God. Amen. Okay. So in fact, Christian life is one of trust yeah. from beginning till the end. Yeah. You can't say you're a Christian and don't trust what God. Mm. Um, there was a situation in my workplace. Beginning of a year, or last year, yeah, last year, November, uh, during the closing year ceremony of the university. The vice principal of the university spoke about, spoke, spoke about my project. Um, you know, it was live on internet. Said, you know, Prof. Senga and the group are doing so well in the pompo, and, 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 and. So my boss got up offended about that. So this year, when we started, we wanted to start the project. I had to go to and meet 500 kids at uh, the pompo on the 1st of April. She said she didn't sign all the documents. She said, you'll never go. And I said, God, you make a plan. Yes, that one we failed. We didn't go. But the second ones, I said, God, before I send these memos and applications, I pray, God, you're going to make means for them to do to pastor. Guess what? They went through. So this year, she went on leave around July, August, yeah, July, August, September. Now came, uh, last, uh, last week came a project at the university to appoint the best woman of the university who made a difference. Guess what? Wow. They said the best woman who did well in the Department of Health Studies is Prof. Senga. Your project is making a difference in the young women there. You train so many women. So, and God waited for her to go and leave. You know, so the deputy of that, that particular person will say, wow, this woman has something in it. You know? So, so really trusting in God is very, very important. Amen. So we must trust God at all the time. Amen. So, so God is great. People might look unto you and think, you know, undermine you, but God, God will be there at all the time. Amen. The perfections of God. Why should we trust God? Because there are perfections in God. What are the perfections? Everything about God is trustworthy. You know, there are no lies in God. As human beings, we lie. But in God, there are no lies. Whatever God does is trustworthy. So we must always but remember that. So the Bible tells us about the two ways of truth. The first one, it warns about what the folly or foolishness of trusting in anyone. Don't fool yourself, huh? Don't trust on anyone. The second one is what? 
we have what unique glory. We must trust what no God at all the times. So then we have man versus what God. It's incomparable. You can't compare the two because that particular man has been created by God. God was, has created everything on the universe. So that's why at all the times we must look unto God, but not what look unto what any other person. We are warned. Can we look at Jeremiah 5, verse, uh, 7, 7 verse 5? It says, Curse is the man who trusts in the man and makes what flesh is strength. Whose heart turns away from the Lord. Um, uh, if, if my kids can trust me than God, that is very wrong. Amen. Because number one in their lives will be God. Amen. Then the rest shall follow. Amen. So in, whether, whether at workplace, whether at home, whether in the community, we must, what? We must say God first and then second the other people will come. So God must be number one in all your situations. It doesn't matter whatever is going through in your life. So we must always want to try to remember that at all the times. And who's God? Who's God? Who's God, my game? Who's God? My girl, who's God? God is God. Say, Sophie, who's God? <laughs> he says, she's nodding her head. God is not dependent on anyone. Amen. God is not dependent on anyone. Why? He does not need anything because he's a source of life and breath and everything else. So whatever you have, your house, your clothes, <laughs> this church, everything belongs to to God. Hence, we must use that word no wisely. Because the owner is watching. Your body belongs not to God. You must use your body what wisely because the owner is what? Is watching. I usually say, imagine if you have your album. Eh? Do you know what is the album? You know, I, I, I hear young, young people nowadays, they say they are creating content. Uh, <laughs> We, we were in the conference with these young ladies. And then they were taking pictures, and then I was passing. I said, Prof, I don't do this as about pictures. I said, you know, I even go overseas with that, come back without the picture. They said, no, you can't do that. So they say, stand here. <laughs> For what? They say, we're creating content, you know? <laughs> so I don't know what creating content means, but something like whether I, I, To me, I think it's like an album. Eh? Yeah. It's something like that, eh? Yes. Okay. So, so imagine if you have created your content, the content, hey, I, I don't, don't even understand. You have created your content. Now, the following day, you're going back, where do you check, where are they storing the content? Online. Eh? Online. 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 No, it's dangerous because everyone is going to see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Imagine you go back online to check your content. You had these beautiful pictures where you know you collected, you were doing something good, like yesterday, Mama Nen, what is yesterday? <laughs> spring, yeah. Uh, like you, you collected on spring. And now you go there, you want to see what's happening. Manakan? Maybe when what you posted there is you what no maybe I don't know doing something, but you look but very very beautiful. And suddenly when you go there, you see something that is very bad and ugly. What are you going to do? Why delete? Why do we delete? It does not want to reflect you as a person. Yeah. We are doing exactly that to go to God. You know, God created us what with his own image. He wants us not to do what no good about what our life, to do something good. So that when he looks upon us, to say, oh, my kids are doing so well. Yeah. But what are we doing? We are creating something that is horrible. And God, if God can delete us, what's going to happen? So always reflect on whatever you're doing to say, if the creator is looking at me, is it really what good? Can he keep this picture of me? Or maybe should he delete it? So that's very, very dangerous. And God has promises, eh? John 17 verse 17 and Numbers 23 verse 19. It says God can be trusted. 
Eh? We can trust God because you know God is the creator of the universe. So we can trust God. Uh, if you trust a person, it's very dangerous. A person can promise you today to say, uh, come tomorrow, I'll give you something. And then you go there tomorrow and says, eh, you know, life happened. <laughs> eh? And imagine you budgeted. The person said, I'm going to give you, is it 1K? What is 1K? <laughs> eh? 100. Oh, 1,000. Okay. Then the person said, come and get the 1K. And then now tomorrow you are going there. You said, I'm here for the 1K. He says, oh my God, you know, my sister, you know, life happened. You know, something happened yesterday. But God, whatever God promises, it will come to pass. Amen. God has never, you know, there's a song that uh, says, there's nothing you cannot do. Yeah. You know, that song, do you know it? Yes, Maybe let them sing it for us, then you, you hear what the, the author or the artist is saying about that song. And there's nothing that God cannot do. So, I'm gonna... hey, unfortunately, I can't sing. Eh? There is nothing you cannot do. Exactly what no is written in the Bible. So when we pray, let's what quote what the verses and say, God, you promise to say you can do this. Amen. So here is my mountain and trust upon to the Lord. Amen. You know, when you go to traditionally last Usango, believe me, you pay 24-7 down the clock. Almost a hundred thousand or whatever. But you go back, the situation remains the same. So but if you go unto the Lord. Trust upon him to say, God will serve this. God will definitely do that. Yeah. However, we must remember, Jeremiah 60, verse 22, God says, What? I, the Lord, when the time is right, I will make it happen. Amen. So don't hurry God and say, You said this, tomorrow it must happen. No. Because God knows what is the right time for that particular thing to happen in your life. Amen. So it's up to you to seek what the truth. We've been given a free choice, a free will to make our own choices. But remember, for each choice that you make, there are consequences. If there are two 
roads that are there, you decide what to take this one, you are going to meet whatever is what available in the display area. Yeah. So whatever choice you make, there are consequences. Yeah. So remember that. Hmm. And you're not going to blame anyone for that particular because you made a choice. Yeah. If you make a choice, you have consequences and accept the consequences as well because the choice is from, from you. Others say you have made a bed, then lie on it. Yeah. That is a challenge that we have. Yes. And so Jesus can help you with the emptiness. Sometimes you feel so empty that you don't know what to do, but God can get rid of the emptiness, believe me. It happens to all of us. What you feel, but God, what's happening in my life? You feel so empty. But God can get rid of the emptiness. What do you do when you are empty? Because if you are empty, then you go to a wrong direction, then what is the problem? So when you are empty, what do you do? So when you are depressed, what do you do? Because God can take away the depression that you have. When we have depression, what do you do? So go to God, because God can do that. Amen. Call him to Jesus, talk to him, he will listen because he loves you. Amen. God loves all of us. Amen. There are times where if someone has offended me and say, but what's wrong with this person? Then I remember to say, you are not supposed to deal with the person, but deal with what? With the act and the spirit, the evil spirits that are there. Because the person is not what wrong. The person has been used by someone else for a child but and offend you. So don't hate the person. But pray for that particular thing that is making the person behave the way they do. Amen. It's a challenge, eh? Yeah. So the love and blessings from God and Jesus are permanent, believe me. Yeah. They are not temporary. And unfortunately, you can't see what is coming our way. Yeah. But if God can open uh, the spiritual eyes and then we see, he will be running, you know, left and right. Yeah. But God is so kind you know, to block all the things that are painful in our life so that we don't see what's happening. Mm -hmm. And he takes care of them. Amen. You know, there's nothing that you know, comes to God without what, you know, with a surprise. Yeah. God knows your tomorrow. Amen. So we must always what, you know, try and, and, and trust on him. Amen. So it's not like temporary happiness about the things of this world. Well, the things of the world, they are going to make you temporarily happy. And, but later on, the depression comes back again. Amen. But if you have God, you'll be happy throughout. Amen. There are times when, when I go home, I look at the person who's living in a shack. This person is living in a shack. You know, there's nothing in the house, but they are so happy. Mm. You know, they, they are rejoicing. And why? Because they trust unto the Lord. Yeah. What is making us, making us not depressed? You know, because I believe God must give me this, must give me that, must give me this. And yet God has plans about my life. Or maybe the things that I want from God are not what? The things that God in the plans about my life. Amen. So I believe, you know, I qualify to have something that is important to what than the other person. No. God has plans about your life. Amen. So whatever you have, God has planned them you know, to, to be in your life. Amen. So by the minute I start what, looking at other thing and say, hey, maybe I need to have the how train, you know, that I own the how train. <laughs> and yet I know that my pocket cannot qualify for me to go and buy the how train. Do you get that? Yeah. So, so let us what, trust God because God has plans about our life. Amen. And what we have, God what, has planned them you know, to come to our life. Amen. So we must be content with what we have. Amen. So... That is the end of my sermon. <laughs> to say we must trust God and, and, and thank God for everything. Amen. So if you feel maybe you have some depression or some other challenges, Moroto is here and yeah, she can definitely want to do that thing that she's known about. And and nearly they said I must ask my regards to Moroto and the church and, and she has visited Rustin Bay. <laughs> So, so, so thank you so much, uh, Church, for listening to my, my little sermon, and thank you so much for understanding, and God bless you.